Hi, I'm Christine Olivieri, your Paleo Practitioner, and welcome to an advanced exercise video lesson. This type of exercise is called interval training, and it's a little bit more advanced for most people. Most people start off walking or slow jogging, which is fine. And if you want to do that for three, four, five, ten miles, if that's your thing, wonderful. But you get so much more out of your exercise session if you transition to interval training. This actually increases your heart rate um, while you're doing your sprints and also increases your EPOC, E-P-O-C, which is post-exercise oxygen consumption. Now this is the goal of anybody who exercises. We want to keep our metabolism high, not only for the time we're doing our exercise, which could be 20 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour, an hour and a half, we want to keep our metabolism running at a higher rate for hours after the exercise session. That would be a high intensity session, like running rather fast. But very few people want to do that, and you don't have to. All you need to do is increase your heart rate in short bursts, such as interval training. That increases your EPOC, or post-exercise oxygen consumption, for hours after your exercise session. So you want to keep your high level of metabolism burning and humming along for 8, 10, 12, or 24 hours or longer? Interval training is for you. Now what interval training is, and I'm going to demonstrate it on my treadmill, the main reason I'm doing it here is because I can control my speed. And interval training is a, is a change between a slow walk or run and a fast walk or run. How slow or fast you decide to have your difference between your slow and your fast sprints for yourself, that is totally up to you. So you will find that if you try to push yourself too fast, too hard, you can end up with a little bit of an injury. So always go slow and advance yourself slowly over the weeks and months. So I can get an awful lot of exercise and I'm pretty sure my epoch will probably last for about 24 hours on the days that I exercise. And I get all of that bang for my buck for only 40 minutes on the treadmill. So whether or not you decide to do 15, 20, 30, or more minutes on the treadmill, if you do interval training, you will get a lot more exercise out of your exercise. Ready? Let's get started. So I start my warm-up by setting my treadmill to about three miles an hour. That's a nice walk, and I'll do that for about five minutes. While you're walking on the treadmill or outside, watch your form. Make sure that you don't drag your feet as you walk. And I want you to concentrate also on your breathing. You should take in one breath for about every four to five steps. So you'll breathe in for four to five steps and breathe out for four to five steps. This is how I usually start my interval training, which I believe is the best way to get the most out of your time exercising. We all have tight schedules and time is the most common reason cited to not exercise. So therefore, interval training can give you amazing results in 20 minutes rather than 30, 40, 60 minutes or more. When you're ready to ramp it up, you're going to start a nice warm-up of about six miles an hour. That's what I do. Whatever a slow jog is for you, that's what you should do. And start warming yourself up for about another five minutes, watching your form and how your feet hit the pavement. This, at this stage, you're probably going to be breathing in one breath for about every three steps. So three steps breathe in and three steps breathe out. So as you can see, there's a few things you're going to be focusing on. You're going to be focusing on your breathing, focusing on how your hands are kept as quiet as possible, and you're going to be focusing on how your foot hits the pavement, that mid-foot strike. Very important. So this is your warm-up, so your heart rate should slowly increase to about 60% of your max predicted rate. 220 beats a minute minus your age is 100% of your max predicted rate. You want to take 60% of that number. So 
as you can see, it's very important that you, when you're running, that your foot strikes the ground as a midfoot strike, not a heel strike. So I want you to see, as you watch in slow motion, how my foot is striking the middle of the foot to the ground, not the heel first. So now you can see I'm slowing the treadmill down during my first interval. I've sufficiently warmed up and now I slow my treadmill down to three miles an hour. I'll walk that off and try to recover slightly but not completely and then I'll ready, be ready to ramp it up for my first high speed interval. So interval training, as you can see, is doing some form of aerobic exercise, whether you're walking, running, swimming, biking, kettlebell workouts, it doesn't matter. And you vary your heart rate between episodes of short, intense sprints and recovery. Each interval can take two to three minutes on average. And you can do four, six, eight, 10 or more of them. This video is intended to help you understand the benefits of this form of aerobic exercise. And now you can see I'm ready to do my first sprint. Sprints for me go at about nine miles an hour. When you're doing a sprint, you wanna get your heart rate up to about 85 to 100 percent of your max predicted. So for me, or anyone around the age of 50, that would be anywhere between 140 or so to 170 beats per minute. When you slow down for each interval, the goal is to have your heart rate drop prior to starting the next sprint. A 30 to 40 beat per minute drop is good. So when you're ready to do your complete cool down at the end of your workout, your goal is to get your heart rate low before you stop. Again, I'll run a slow run at about six miles an hour for the last five minutes, and then go down slowly to about two miles an hour until my heart rate is hovering around 100 to 110. That's a good cool down. You wanna cool your muscles down slowly and run un slowly until your body becomes acclimated to the slower heart rate. Then you can walk it out. Stop when your heart rate slows enough so you are not breathing hard any longer. You see, the best thing about interval training is that it puts your heart rate into the cardio zone. However, it is also the best for fat burning. So you get the best of both worlds. Because you enter your cardio zone, your heart rate is increased enough to elicit a good EPOC, which is your post-exercise oxygen consumption. When you get a good EPOC, you increase your basic metabolic rate of burning calories for many hours after your exercise is over. How long the EPOC lasts, and many can last anywhere from six hours to more than 24 hours, depends on how long you keep your heart rate at 85 to 100% of max predicted. Also, of course, things come into play such as your individual genetics, and how much muscle mass you have developed. So as you approach the end of your workout, cool down sufficiently and reward yourself with a high protein meal. I usually eat some eggs and fruit after my workouts. Then take a shower and start your day, enjoying hours of EPOC and higher calorie burn. So I hope you learned a lot about interval training and I hope you use this very, very effective method of exercise. And thank you for letting me be your paleo practitioner.